what's happening gang it's your boy bruce mobile we pulling up on the scene we are today working on a ford transit we're going to do some brakes and i'm going to walk you guys through on how we do it all right gang so we about to do the rear brakes and rotors on this 2022 uh ford transit 350 so i'm starting off by jacking this thing up i like to jack it up by the axle you don't know what's in here or how heavy this thing could is so uh it's best to just jack it up by the axle so that's where we're at right now got it got it up elevated all you gotta do in order to get this wheel out make sure your parking brakes off by the way guys parking brake is off pop the hood and you got your fluid reservoir cap off so when we get to the point to where we're starting to press in that piston it's got plenty of space to go without 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 resistance so these lug nuts are a 21 millimeter socket and we're going to start by removing them they're held or fastened at 150 foot pounds of torque so remember that when you go to put these back on just going to go ahead and knock them off real quick shouts out to milwaukee also shouts out to homestar group for uh hiring bruce smoother good job guys Let's get this guy off, and as y'all can see already, immediately these rotors are pretty grooved. They're not terrible, but mm, you don't really want to chance it with this, especially this is a commercial vehicle. Um, you want to keep these things in the best shape possible, so we're not going to take any chances. They need all the stocking power. These things be loaded. And if you take a close look. There is a bit of a groove here from the metal on metal contact. The other side is actually worse, but we're starting on this side because it actually has the uh, brake wear sensor, sensor on the driver's side versus the passenger side. It won't have one. So keep that in mind. Um, if yours may or may not have it, it's got the electronic braking system. If you have a scanner, you can electronically disengage these and, and put them in service mode to where it'll wind in the uh, caliper piston for you but we're going to do it the manual way because i left my scanner at home of course so i'm going to show you guys how we dial them in using a uh, mechanical tool so first thing first guys we're going to have to get these brake calipers off and the caliper bracket so that's what we're going to work on and then we'll go ahead and remove these uh, hub bolts which these should be held in by a 15 millimeter socket. We'll do that next. Um, and essentially we got our parts there. You guys see, get the part numbers if you need them. You're gonna need a pub seal, rotor, brake pads, what comes with the uh, hardware, new brake bolt, uh, caliper bracket bolts, um, new clips, and yeah that's essentially it with the pads if you order them from the dealership part numbers we have dealer part numbers available for you if you check the slide before the slide you can see all your part numbers that you're going to need so first thing first let's go ahead and get this caliper bracket removed which i believe is going to be a 13 which i don't have on hand right now All right, gang, so like I said, to get this caliper off, we're gonna start with a 13 millimeter socket to get it, to break it loose. Um, and they're gonna wanna turn on you, so it's good to have a set of pliers on hand to grip this pin square. You just wanna grab it so you can loosen it up. That one's loose. And I'm gonna go to the bottom and do the same thing. Grab the square. And then break it loose. Once I got it loose, I'm gonna speed things up with my Milwaukee ratchet. And the new uh, brake pads, if you order from the dealership, 
They come with new bolts, so we'll discard those. Also, guys, uh, these hub bolts, when you go to remove those, these are one-time use only, so you wanna get new ones. We got five of them here, brand new from the dealer. The part number, you ain't already got it from the previous slide. All right, so now let's go ahead and remove this caliper here. Oh, so I'm moving a little bit ahead of myself. I forgot to remove the wear sensor, which just sits right here inside the brake pad. Get yourself a pair of pliers, grab it here, and just work it out. I'm not really concerned about breaking it because I got a new one. But you can see this one's been already breached because it's shaved off. If you compare it to the new one, this one's sort of got a head on it. So once it's been breached, you got to replace it. So make sure you get a new wear sensor. Actually, they come with the new, they come with the brake kit. And then you just pull off the uh, bleeder screw cap to kind of unroute it. And then there is a tab here on this here. <laughs> wear sensor deep inside here guys you push this tab here you see it me pushing it and release there we go all right so that's done and we can take this caliper off now and it's held by this little doohickey here now, for the fun part, I'm going to go ahead and push the uh, it's in. It's right here. Yeah, so I got this toolkit from Cornwell, but different makes make it. This is the Cornwell uh, part number for the tool right there. But uh, this is essentially the one you want. It fits in there perfect, like that. Magnetic, and then you want to dial it in. So this is different from the front. You got to have this tool to do the rear. And like I said, if you got a computer, you can electronically dial this in. But since we don't have it. We're going to use a mechanical way. And then you just adjust it out at the collar until it's tight. And we're going to turn it in clockwise. And be mindful. Once you do it the mechanical way, you really have to reset the electronic brakes once it's all completed. I'll show you guys how to do that once it's all done. Or you will get an, an error message in your parking brakes rule be set and won't want to release. So now we're just gonna torque it in like that. And you just gotta be patient with it, take your time, dial it in till it's all the way in. You'll feel it when it bottoms out, you'll start feeling the electronic part kind of motor trying to actuate then you know when to stop. So I'm gonna dial it in until I feel it. It does have a good little bit of resistance on it, but I should go on it. Clockwise. All the way in. The closer you get it to the bottom, the easier it is to get everything installed. Almost there. Yep, bottomed out. So, essentially, that's where you want it to be. Flush, almost flush with the caliper. And we're gonna rest it here on the jack for now, out of the way. Now, let's get our pads out. 
Uh, where is my mini pry bar? We're just gonna pick these out. This is essentially where your wear sensor sits in this little groove. You see these pads are done. So off with that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these clips while we're here and take note, pay attention to these clips cause they do come with two different ones. Um, if you can see here, you got a top and you got a bottom. The one with this little lip, that's the bottom versus the top looks more I guess it's got a hook on it, that's it. The top doesn't have the lip, the bottom has the lip. So be mindful of that. Just gonna remove the bottom. As you can see, it's got the lip that I'm talking about. And then we're gonna remove the top. No lip. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and, even though we're gonna take this caliper bracket off, I'm just gonna go ahead and put these clips, have them seated so they'll be ready when we go to install them. One of those things we gotta do, even though we're gonna take it down. So for those of you that don't necessarily have to do the rotor, this is all you're gonna have to do here. And you can fast forward the clip to see uh, how we install the pads or whatever. But we're gonna walk it all the way through to the rotor. Like I said, guys, this rotor is pretty grooved. The other side is even worse, so. Let's go ahead and get those in here. And let's see what size is this caliper bracket. Oh. Um, these look like to be a 15 for the bracket. While you at it, be sure to check your caliper pins. I don't care what you're doing brakes on. If they got caliper pins, you want to check them, make sure they move in and out. Because if they hang up or if they stuck, they will cause your brakes to wear prematurely and unevenly and cause you not to get the full life of your brake pads. If the case that they get stuck or seized, you want to make sure you unseize them. And if you do happen to get them unseized, you want to add some grease if necessary, this one's a little dry, so I'm gonna add a little dab of grease on there, keep it lubed up so that they keep working well. And look at that, nice and smooth. And so all you gotta do is just pop them out of there like that. Dab them with a little grease and go back in. That's it, so simple maintenance. Now let's get this caliper bracket off. They're pretty tight. Probably because they got some light tight on them, so I may not be able to use my ratchet. I'm gonna have to use the regular ratchet. So you 
you see it's got blue Loctite on there and that's what's got them so tight. So I break it to the side. All right. So now that we do, let's get our pan. You wanna make sure you got a pan handy because you will leak a little bit of actual fluid, which the OEMs uh, specified axle, axle uh, oil is uh, 70, what is this? 7580, 7585. That's what the OEM uh, recommended fluid that goes in here. But you can also use 7590 weight, since you the same thing. And it's probably a lot cheaper, so. Keep that in mind whichever route you want to go um so you may have to top it off maybe with like half a quart um so yeah now what we're going to do is remove these hub bolts which are one time use only guys so make sure you have new ones handy when you go to remove these already got some gear to it. They're gonna make a mess let's get these bolts out of the way because they're gonna get greasy. Just keep them separated for the new ones. Alright. And sometimes they may be a little bit harder to come come a loose. You may have to hit it with a hammer. I still may have to hit it with a hammer, but I'm gonna try to not have to. Well that's the rotor actually that came apart. So essentially to remove the rotor you can just slide it at that point. But in order to get it off, you gotta get this hub axle out the way. So let me get a hammer to break this free. Maybe hit it with some uh, penetrating oil and we'll get it separated. All right, so I'm gonna hit it with some penetrating oil to help unjar this here. Axle hub, and then I'm gonna hit it a few times. There we go. We're leaking a little oil there. See, it ain't much, but we definitely wanna try to replenish it. And there we go, guys. I'm sliding out of there. Smelling like gear oil. This smells good. It smells like fresh gear oil. Look at it. It's in pretty good shape this thing's only probably got a uh, not even 150,000 miles on it so and this is the seal that you're gonna have to replace guys right here that sits right in this crevice so make sure you go ahead and get the, a new seal this one's probably still in good shape but since we disturbed it we're just gonna go ahead and replace it while we're here like we said guys we do want to prevent this thing from breaking down especially since we touched it so these guys can keep making their money that's how we do it so uh like i said this thing pretty much once you unbolt it you can just kind of manipulate it and slide it through here look at that it just comes right out of there like that and very unique rotor design i guess this is the way they're doing it now um so yeah interesting this one really ain't that bad y'all but we do have a, a nice little groove there. I'm not too pleased with that, but you could probably get away with not replacing it. But better to be safe than sorry, like I said. All right, um, let's go ahead. New rotor, fresh off the box. We got the part number here, the BRRF239. And then you got another following CK for Z2C 026C OEM part number got this straight from Ford not playing no games uh, I wasn't able to really outsource this at a local art, uh, auto parts store slim pickings especially with this being a 2022 this thing is already coated with like a paint 
so you don't have to really worry about cleaning off any oil but you do want to clean it off because we're going to get it a little dirty so make sure you got some brake cleaner on hand and just simply just go back in with it just like that fresh crispy cream straight out the box and then just line it back up with the hose so that when we go to put all this back together it all meshes well let me go ahead and get that new seal make sure it's done right so happens more often than i like it too but they do mess it up a lot but it should have gave us the right one i went straight to the dealership i don't understand how that got mixed up but it did okay so you got to feel for it for it to spline into the differential feel for it and then just push it all together as best you can once you get it going it should eventually just drop in like that right right so get a few little nudge slight taps all the way flush and then we're going to go in with our new bolts we are going to make sure we start it by hand first and then we're going to run it up and then torque these these do have a specified torque specification which I'll explain to you in just a moment. Did we already give them the part number for these bolts? So there are five of these, one time use. There's the part number again. I didn't already give it to you. Once we get them started with our fingers, I'm then going to just lightly tighten them. Tighten them too much because you want to torque these with our torque wrench. Okay, give me that torque wrench. Alright, so I'm going to adjust my torque wrench. This one is going to start, we're going to start with 35 foot pounds. 35 foot pounds, 35 foot pounds. So I'm going to have to get a different one. This is a half inch. I'm probably going to have to get a 3 8 to get to achieve 35. This one doesn't even. It don't go to 35. It starts out at about, looks like, 40. So let me go get a 3 8 torque wrench, and we'll go from there. 15, start out with 35 foot-pounds. So, 35. So we're gonna torque it to in a star pattern. I think since the other wool is on the ground, it should stay it should stay still. We don't necessarily need to hold it. So once you get it all achieved to 35, then it's an additional 70 degrees, which is equivalent to 117 foot pounds. If I'm not mistaken. I don't have an angle torque wrench or angle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to 117. So that's about 117 right there. And we're just gonna torque it. 117. One smooth motion. which I probably need an extension because it's a little bit too close. All right, so let's try it again. There we go. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. There we are. So now 
Now we got it torqued on there. We achieved the torque we need, and they're on there, guys. So this is the point where I will go ahead and hit it with some brake cleaner, get all this grease off. and grind them off best we can. There we go, nice and clean, like new again. All right, now let's go back on with our caliper bracket. Where are those bolts? Right here. Which is good to replace these two, but we're gonna reuse ours in this particular scenario. Run them in. Oh. Let's see if our electric got enough power to run them up. Give it a shot. Let's see what it's got. Can we see? so far and got so much power with this thing all right we must look the rest of the way tight right there so now we need our brake pads which we've already got this one started the way we install these clips on these brake pads because so they come with new clips they got a slot on there they only go one direction bam real simple real easy and I'm gonna go ahead and coat these things with grease because these be the first thing to screech when you go to hit your brakes so we're going to coat those real well so they're not screaming at us straight like that that's essentially all you got to do just try not to get them on your pad and then the way you install these you gotta push them push up against the spring and kind of Curve it in there. So I'm gonna this up way. Cause we're done. With that. And I like to start with the insides because they're a little bit more challenging. Because you can't really see what the hell you're doing. Um, like I said, curve them in there. Push the spring. Push up against that spring. Start with that. Kind of monitor what you're doing at the same time. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Get that bottom one started. There we go. Just like that. Once you get the swing of it, you got it. Now, let's go same thing here with the outer ones. These are a little bit easier because you can see better what you're doing. I'm going to repeat the same process on the outside. All right. Wait a minute. 
before I get too far, guys. I just noticed something. We gotta make sure we use the right pad for the inside because it needs to have this little notch in there. And I put one in there that doesn't have the notch, so we can't put our wear sensor. So I'm gonna have to take this one back off and put it on the outside. So keep that in mind as well. If you got a wear sensor, you gotta make sure you put it on the right side. The wear sensor goes on the inside. So there we go. Let's try that again. Put my clips on, like so. Like so, like so. And like so, like so. <clears throat> Gotta love Ford, man. Gotta love him. They just get more and more complex. Like they're trying to keep up with Mercedes or something. I'm being sarcastic when I say that. Gotta love him. Anybody who knows me knows that I do not deal with Ford as far as my preference of vehicle. There we go. That one was not so bad because we kind of got the, got the gist. So now we got a man, piston caliper, caliper piston in. Now watch how easy they just slide on there. Just like so. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so something is, okay, the other thing is there is a notch in which these things must align on the brake pad, so. something else to keep in mind these little notches they need to line up with your brake sensor so that it'll go on correctly so in order to get that to line up I'm going to use my brake tool again and rotate this take this thing out so so part of this is I'm learning as I go I got the first one together apparently on accident because it went together real smooth like this one not so much but I know what I gotta do so let me back it off and just line it up just like that. Try to center it. See what I did there? Center this little crevice. And let's try it again. There we go. Now, I believe it's lining up. I believe so. Go ahead, we got new bolts, come with our new brake hardware. Get it started. With our fingers, that's what we wanna do, if we can. Okay, if we can. like that. Now, to the bottom. Okay. Give me that 13 back.
cooperate. It's fighting us. I don't think I got it all the way lined up, so what I'm gonna do here is just kind of pry it where I need it to go. The rest of the way until it does line up. this one. I'm sure this one is tight. I don't know if it's still moving. We have another set of hands. I think I got it though. Yep, yeah, that's it right there, guys. Nice and tight. Okay. should be good in that department all right one other thing I forgot to mention y'all make sure you install this rotor correctly you want this little divot on the outside right here so you know you got it right so take note of that and then now for the final part our sensor head towards the rotor the inside of the pad all you do is just press it in there to that little crevice like i showed you guys earlier press it in there lock route it through your bleeder cap and then connect it to your click 
which this one didn't click. There it goes. I don't know, it's just not clicking though for some reason. But it's in there, it's just clip may be broken. It's worn out or something. But essentially as long as we make that connection it should it should be fine. Clip may be worn out, but it should it should click. This one's not clicking. But there you have it. It is installed to spec. So um there you have it. Let's go ahead and put these wheels back on. All right, gang, before we wrap it up, uh, I'm going to make sure I take the diff fluid before we uh, call it the job well done. We're going to take the diff fluid. I'm using 7590 weight, guys. This will work. It's okay to mix it with the uh, 70, with this uh, with the differential fluid. Like I said, the OEM specifies 7585. So I'm going to get here right here at the field plug. As you guys can see, it's right here on the driver's side. This is where we're going to check it. And all we want to do is just open up that plug. And ideally, we want fluid to kind of be flowing out of there. This is the field plug. And um, so I got some cardboard here to catch it. So you can pull it over. But essentially, it's just a uh, 3 8 socket. And you're just going to loosen that up. Check it. It starts running out. We know we're we're good. So just be ready, be ready. So okay. And then all you gotta do is take your finger. If you're not, and just wanna put your fingertip on there. Feel for it. I use. So essentially, it's good. But since we lost a little bit, I just wanna top it off anyway, just to be on the up and up. When I see it kind of start running out, and I know it's full for sure. It's good to have this bag because it's flexible, can fit into tight spots. It's very flexible. So that's that's in the case that it's full. I'm gonna go ahead and cork it back. And just tighten it up. You don't gotta tighten it flush. Leave it protruding out just a little bit. And guys, that is essentially all you gotta do. So, for the last step, all right, and now for the final step, guys, we're gonna go inside and check make sure we reset this electronic braking system because it will give you an error since we tampered with it and dialed it in mechanically i'm going to show you guys how to kind of reset it and what it'll do so let's go inside yeah put your cap back on as you can see the level kind of raised up that's from us pushing all the fluid from the caliper right, first thing i like to do once i get inside is Pass that brake pedal because it's going to be nice and mushy at first. Get it nice and firm, and then you're about ready to go. Especially if you didn't just did the front, then that's all you essentially got to do to get the the fluid back to the uh, calipers. So it goes for the rear as well. All right, y'all. So I want to show you what happens when you try to activate the parking brake once you've actually messed with it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the parking brake and set it. 
so as you can see parking brake is on and then we're going to try to release it by pushing it in press the brake okay so essentially this one's okay um sometimes it'll have an error message to where it won't want to release once you tamper with the uh electronic brakes all you would then have to do is if that were to ever happen let me show you if you get an error message which this one's not showing you but i'm just going to go through the through the motions so i would set the brake it will set parking brake on but then it will give you a message it won't want to release so all you have to do is just essentially turn the vehicle off turn it back on hold the actual gas pedal and then push in the release button and it will reset it so another method just in case but this one actually went through well and it's working so i'm going to consider this a job well done guys um and yeah that concludes this video stay tuned for more episodes